The White House says near Tandon, the president's nominee for budget director requested to withdraw her name from consideration. With Joe Manchin opposed to, and Lisa Murkowski wavering, the votes just weren't there. Tannen would have been the first woman of color and the first Indian American to fill the position. But the historic nature of her nomination was overshadowed during the confirmation process by some meanish tweets. Let's take a look at some of those tweets in question. Back in June, Tannen urged people to, quote, focus their ire on Mitch McConnell and the GOP senators who enable him. She also compared Senator McConnell to Voldemort, you know, from Harry Potter. During the confirmation of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh, she called Susan Collins the worst for doubting the allegations of Kavanaugh's accuser. She called Tom Cotton a fraud and said Ted Cruz is as heartless as a vampire. You get the picture. I'm not saying that any of these comments are okay. I am personally opposed to ad hominem attacks. But after four years of a president who weaponized social media to bully his opponents into submission, choosing a woman to make an example out of just feels downright misogynistic to me. And joining me now is Tina Chen, president and CEO of Time's Up and former chief of staff to First Lady Michelle Obama. I want to start with the tweet that you wrote about this, which I was like, yes, in my house, snapping and clapping in, in agreement. Um, you said the message that women need to sit down and be quiet needs to be rejected. Elaborate on what you mean and, and why you see this um, as sexist. There's a double standard at play in your view and explain to us why that is. Well, clearly, certainly, certainly, you just laid it out, right? We just came out of four years of the Twitter user in chief from the Oval Office tweeting all manner of ad hominem attacks on everyone. Here is Nira acting as an advocate. Let's take a look at those tweets, right? She's acting as an advocate on important issues that affect women, people of color, issues that people care about. And now, Here's the moment in which we're going to say she can't become the OMB chief. And let's not forget, this is not only a historic nomination. This is an incredibly qualified woman who actually understands the issues confronting the federal government, understands the needs actually of Senator Manchin's constituents and what they're going to need the federal government to invest in. And because she's got mean tweets out there, now there's a double standard that we're going to apply to this woman of color that we have not applied to, let's be clear, people like Ambassador Grinnell, who Senator Manchin um, voted to approve, who also had mean tweets to other people out there. The message really is that essentially, if you're a woman, if you're a woman of color, you're supposed to be quiet. And if you're not quiet, we're not gonna vote to confirm you, even if you're qualified to be in the cabinet. Um, you can tell I'm kind of furious about this. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I was so fired up also, especially when I went back and looked at her tweets, because in, in the headlines, they're like, she's, she has mean tweets. And then I read them, I was like, these tweets are not mean. Uh, I mean, Voldemort's sort of funny to me. I mean, I imagine calling Ted Cruz like a vampire. That's not very nice. But mean, I, that's, you know, that's it. You know, you have a judge. That's a judgment call, right? I think they were kind of funny and snarky. Um, why can't we just have one standard across the board? Because to me, it seems like the tweets are almost being used as an excuse just to block Nira Tannen from this job, qualified woman. Um, but if, if she were a man, I don't even think this would come up. Absolutely. We know they wouldn't come up because they didn't come up when men did the same thing and were up for cabinet posts, right? They got approved and they got through. Um, and that's what actually we got to fight against, Erlina. We cannot let the fact that this happened and Nira actually was the bigger person and did not want to burden the Biden administration and withdrew her name, get in the way of making sure that we don't send a message to our girls that the message is, be quiet and stay off of Twitter. We cannot let that take hold. Be bold, speak out, and we need to stand behind women leaders when they do that. That is the only way we will break down the power structures that contribute to so much of the problems that can keep women back, keep people of color back. So Shalanda Young was nominated for deputy director of the Office of Management and Budget, and the CBC actually endorsed her today as the woman to replace Neera Tandon. Um, Republicans, weirdly, I mean, it's just shocking to me when they, they are one way in one hearing and then the complete opposite in another hearing. And you're like, what happened between the, the two hearings? Um, they seem to, to like her. Uh, what do you make of the explosion of support for her among Republican senators? as an alternative, and, and what do you think about her as a replacement for Neera Tandon? 
Well, I think I, I don't know Ms. Young well at all, but I think she's, you know, I, I know she was nominated for the number two. She's really highly regarded and has great qualifications. It would be great to see another woman of color nominated for that top spot. It is an, a critically important budget year for us to have smart women and women who understand the needs of working people and working women out there is critically important. But, you know, look, they seem to have gotten the, per, you know, taken one person down. They chose it to be a woman of color that they decided to take down on the Biden cabinet list. And having gotten that, you know, what for whatever victory they think that was, now they're going to just turn around and not continue to not apply the same standards. Um, and that's what's so infuriating. It was not based on the merits at all. You know, it was based on this false notion of mean tweets. And I really do think what we cannot let take hold is a ripple effect, right, of a message that don't stand up for your the people that you're advocating for. Don't be out there on Twitter pushing back when McConnell does something bad to the people that you care about. Um, that is not a narrative that we can let take hold. The other thing, too, is that I feel like, you know, your first point was important. She was advocating for a particular position, right? She was she was advocating for supporting Democrats because reasons, right? It wasn't, you know, Mitch McConnell's a bad guy. You know, this whole thing has got conflated into her being quote unquote mean, when I think that there was some substance in what she was saying. And maybe, you know, using snark isn't always the best because the tweets last forever. But what's your advice actually to younger women who are, you know, coming up the corporate ladder? They want to, maybe they want to work in politics. Maybe they want to be in a C-suite. You know, how should they handle their social media if, OMB nominee, director nominees, you know, are getting their tweets pulled up at their confirmation hearings. Well, I will say, so I'll give the advice I give my children, <laughs> which is be careful because social media is something that people look at, employers look at, um, and be careful what you put out there into the world and because it never goes away. You may think you've deleted stuff, but it never goes away. Um, so yes, I think that is a word to the wise to be careful. Um, but what I don't want people to take away from that is don't don't be don't be loud. Don't stand up for the principles that you care about, because that's what that's what's so infuriating about this is that Nira, unlike others who've been out there in the political sphere in the Twitterverse who say all manner of things just because somebody said something sideways about them. She was actually fighting on the merits, right? She was fighting against harmful proposals of the Trump administration. Um, and so that is the thing that I think is very dangerous, the dangerous fallout. This isn't just one nominee who went down, it's the reasons she went down and the very dangerous message that potentially could send and we need to push back against that. Important food for thought. Tina Chen, I know I kept you longer uh, than you had, and I apologize uh, for making you late for whatever you have next. Um, but I always love to talk to you. So please come back whenever you're free. Thank you so much for being here again, and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.